called Constants. Uh, this series is, is really about the idea that everything in life is changing all the time, constantly. Uh, I, w- I was watching a uh, show the other day, like a documentary show, of this guy who, who found a real pirate's treasure, and he found an actual treasure map of this um, of, of this treasure, and so he went to where it was, and it, was, it wasn't there anymore, because it had happened like 300 years before, and, and what he soon discovered is because the waves are moving, is that the, the floor of the ocean is constantly changing, and it's moving, and he had to go back for hundreds of years and see the currents, and, and finally found this treasure, because he had to realize, though, that everything is constantly changing. We're going into summer. Kids are out. Oh, my goodness. Everything changes. And I think it's a, a synonym for just the seasons of life and how seasons of life have their ups, they have their downs, they, they, they have their spiral out of the controls, and they have their joys. They have all of that. And, and sometimes one season to the next is a day apart. Like, what happened? See, but things are always changing. But what we said is, in this ever-changing world, just like that buoy in the middle of the water, we've got to set some things up that, hey, these things right here, these things in my life, just will not change. That They're, 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 they're not going to change no matter what hits me, what comes my way, what season of life I'm in, what physical season that we're in in the world. Uh, I, I am not going to change these specific things about who I am. Because these, these specific, small, seemingly small things have the power to control the direction of my life. And um, we, we said this one key thought that we're saying every single week, and we said it's often the small constants, the small constants that's, that no one sees that result in the big effects that everyone wants. We see somebody that's somewhere in life that we want to be. It's usually the small, everyday constant, I'm not going to change this things that get you there. You see somebody's like, man, their relationship with God is so good. I want to get there. It's the small, constant, everyday things that get you there. And, and so what, what, are, what are these things? That's what we've been talking about. And we discussed some, uh, a statement that's a pretty well-known statement. You may have heard it before, before I started uh, preaching this. But it's, it's this, that thoughts become words. Words become actions. Actions create habits, and habits determine our destiny. The habits you do every day, the things that are programmed in, is going to determine where you end up. So last week we talked about our thoughts. And, and we said that, man, this is a powerful part of who we are. Sometimes there's just a different, whole different life going on inside of our mind, in, in our thought life. And it's powerful the way that we think. Proverbs 23, 7 says that as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks in his heart, so as... As you think, so you are. I go in the direction of my most powerful and constant thought. That's what's going to happen. So you've got to guard your mind. You've got to think on those good and those God things constantly. Go back and and, and listen to that message on on the website because it, it is a powerful one about keeping your thoughts in check. Guard your mind. Today we're going to take a next step further, and we're talking about the next constant. We're like, hey, we've got to have some constant thoughts. These things don't change. No matter what looks at life, I'm going to choose to think on these things. And today we're going to talk about the, the words that we use. The words that we use. There's such power in our words. Think about it like this. The very beginning of creation, how did God create everything? His spoken word. His spoken word. God could have chose to, to, to do it however he wanted to, and he used his spoken word. There's a good word picture here of exactly what God's setting up, that there's great power in the words that you speak. Now, I don't have the ability to create something with just my words, but I do have the ability to demolish things and lift things up with my words. I have the ability to set the course of my life with my words, because our words... The, the, the things that, that come out of your mouth are incredibly powerful and important. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, The tongue has the power of life and of death. Has the power of life and of death. I like to say it this way. Your words can either be life-giving or life 
draining can be life giving or life draining you want to change the way that you live your life you want to change the life that you have change the words that you speak change the words that you speak See, because it's the small, constant changes in our words that, that no matter what's looking at me in the face, what season I'm in, what big thing just happened, there's certain words that won't come out of my mouth. There's certain words that will. And I'm constant about this. It's the buoy in the water. No matter if it's a hurricane coming, there's certain things that this, that this mouth will and won't say. Because there's the power of life and death right here. And, and, and James says it a little bit differently. James 3, verse 3 through 5 says this. I want you to make a note of a few words in here. If you've got your physical Bible, you can underline this. It's okay to do that in your Bible or, or, or just make a note of this right here. It said, we can make a large, large, note large, horse go wherever we want by the means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small, make a note of that word, rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. There, there's this contrast of huge and small the huge difference the huge course setting difference is about some small little words that we think don't matter we think they aren't a big deal but small constant changes in our words determine the direction of your life they really do See, your words can have grand motivational speeches, inspirational. Like, you can hear somebody say something, and you're inspired. You can watch a movie with a good storyline, and you can leave feeling like you can race cars. Right, There's, the words have power to inspire, or the tiniest word has the power to set a fire. Life or death, life or death, it makes it clear. James even reiterates it. Uh, that, that, hey, there's either going to be a fire that demolishes this thing or it can be very inspiring, all depending on what comes out of the, some small words from your mouth. See, if you show me a relationship or a marriage that's healthy, probably, most likely, there's some life-giving words going on. You show me something that's, that's unhealthy, you'll see the opposite. You look at some workplaces that are thriving and that people want to work at, that you wake up in the morning and you don't just dread. You, you don't, you, don't uh, you know, hate your life because you've got to turn the alarm off and go to work. Maybe getting up is not fun, but going in isn't, isn't too terribly bad. You show me that kind of environment, usually there's some life-giving kind of words that are going on. Think about the people that you like being around. Think about the speech and the words that they have. There's usually something uplifting and encouraging about the words that they use. The words that lift you up. You feel better when you're around them. Then think of somebody the opposite. Like we all we all know the difference between life giving and life draining, and you can probably put a face to it. Right? You probably have some. S some conversation in mind when you think about, yeah, that was, uh, that, that friend, you know, like, i got to be ready whenever they call because uh, I I've got to, like, pray for an hour to where I'm not depressed when I get off the phone. You, you, we, we all know those kind of conversations. See, Solomon talks about the contrast between life-giving and uh, life-taking a few times. In Proverbs 12, 18, he says this, he said, some people make cutting remarks but the words of the wise bring healing. You can probably think of a time in your life when you felt cut or stabbed by some words. When, when, when somebody used something against you that really hurt, right? You've been stabbed in the back. Yeah, Solomon thought of that term first. He said, there's some cutting words. But you can also think of those times where somebody said the right words at the right time. You were really struggling, and somebody came up 
beside you and, and, and they really uplifted you. They knew what to say. Proverbs 15, 4 says this, Gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. See, it can be as simple as things that people say that they don't even think about that, that hurt. Or maybe there's been some real intentional things in life that have been said to you or that you've even said to other people that, that, have, that have cut and that have crushed people's spirits, that have crushed your own spirit. Can you, have you ever thought of a time where that's happened to you, where somebody's words hurt? Whew, man, y'all are good. Okay, nobody. Well, this sermon is for me because I've, first of all, been to junior high, and, and I know that there were some words that hurt and that crushed. I've lived in the real world, and people don't always live by this constant principle. See, we, we know the, the, the blessing that life-giving words give, too. Um, has anybody ever, maybe not done so good, but somebody still said, you did great. I'm proud of you. Um, I love you. I appreciate you. I love that haircut. It looks so good. What, you said you didn't even recognize it. No, I just didn't have words to describe how good that, no, those, those pants do not make you look fat. They're just way, I mean, your body's just too nice for those pants. I wouldn't wear them again. Um, not that, I mean, in general, in general, not you. But, you see, because those words would create a real stabbing effect because she would grab a knife. Um, but, but there's power in the words that you say. And sometimes the little small things that you don't even think hurt somebody do. But there, there's, there's power of life and of death in the words that we speak. So today, we're going to take a little word audit. Last week, we took a thought audit. Today, we're going to take a word audit. And there's some pieces of paper in the seats uh, beside you. Maybe you don't have a pen. If you don't, that's okay. Just take a mental note uh, of, of where you're at on this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rate kind of this past season of life that we've been in. Maybe this past week. Maybe you can even just think about yesterday. But, but kind of what, what has characterized our life for the past little season. And we're going to rate it from 1 to 10. And i got two sections on there. I'm t uh, of others and myself. Okay, so 1 to 10, um, we want to look at were my words that I spoke out more life-taking, which is, which is a 1. A 1 is going to be one of those kind of things where you've, been telling people and saying things like, you're pathetic, why are we together, jump off a bridge, I can't stand you, um, you, you, you got it, you know, you, you, you know, somewhere in there. Um, they make this thing called deodorant, use it, you know, there's nicer ways to say that. So, so one are those, those life taking, but you're like, but that gave life to everybody else that was around them, that's true. Um, so that, that's one. So think between one and ten. Ten being, hey, I'm proud of you. I believe in you. You can do it. Look how good you look. You're amazing. Uh, those kind of things are a ten. So where, where do you think that your speech to others is at? It's been this past season, this past week, from one to ten. You don't have a pen? Just get a mental note of it. Note. Everybody got kind of a note? We're going to make you hold up a number in a minute with your fingers and... No, I'm kidding. You're like, I'm changing it. You're going to lie. You know? <laughs> okay, so, and then on the second one is myself. Because here's the thing about it. Um, here's the thing about it. There's, we're really good sometimes at, at speaking one way to, to people and talking life-giving, but then we, uh, ourselves, we're not so good. So, uh, one to ten. I'm no good at all is like a one. Life-taking. I'm no good. Life is always going to be this bad. Um, I can't make it over this. I can never get ahead. That's, that's like one territory, okay? Ten is God is with me. I'm thankful for today. We can do this. I can do all things through Christ. I'm getting out of debt. There's, there's ten. Where are you on, on your self-talk? Where, where, where are you on that one to ten scale? And how many of you, we're actually going to raise our hands today. This is going to be participation sport. Uh, how many of you say, um, 
I'm better at giving life-giving words to others than to myself. I know I am. I think we're all in this. But if you didn't list a 10 on both of those, guess what? Good news. This is for you. We have some improvement. And just like last week when I was talking about our thoughts, your pastor did not rake as high as I would like to. I'm not as close to that 10 mark as I, would like, as I would like to be. But we have to understand that our words have power. Our words set the course for the direction that our life goes. No matter what, what uh, winds are blowing in your life or what's happening, the words that you speak are setting the course that you'll live. James said it. It's a, this, a small rudder guides the whole ship. You, you, your, your word has the power of life and death, it has the power to do grand speeches or set a flame. Or just set a flame. I see a bunch of people waving. Are those ACs down as low as they'll go? If we can check those, thank you. So I've got um, a couple of rules for you as we, as we go forward. Just, just a couple of rules for setting a course in our life for life-giving words. I think sometimes we don't just put... We don't put much thought into the words that we say. We just kind of say what comes into our mind and go out, and we, there's nothing filtered there. And sometimes we live to regret those moments. Um, so here's a couple, of, uh, a couple of points that we can be sure to live by to make sure there's life giving. Here's the first one. Guess what? Your mama was really smart. She really was. She's not as dumb as we thought we, she was when we were teenagers. Here's the first point. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Here, here's a good rule to keep in your mind all the time. If it isn't helpful, skip it. If it isn't helpful, skip it. Your mama was smart after all. If you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. When I, when I catch the kids sometimes speaking really negative to each other, because, you know, I've got like a 10, a 7, and 4. It's not always life-giving speech. I love you, sister. Yeah, take that. Hit me in the eye. It's fine. Punch me as hard as you can. Knock me down the stairs. I'm cool with that. I love you. It's not always life-giving words. And, and so I try to teach them whenever, whenever they begin to spew out some negative things to each other, like, fat head and, and things like this. I'm like, hey, calm down. These are two people, because there's three of these people running around, so um, one, two, and three is just the easy way to remember them, okay? One, two, and three. Just forget names, one, two, three. Uh, so I said, there's always, the, the, the three of you, the, the two that's sitting beside you right now are always going to be with you. No matter what season of life, you got to make sure that y'all's is the closest relationship than anything. Don't talk like that to each other. Don't talk like that to each other. And hopefully one day that's going to set in because it's not working now. But hopefully one day they're going to love each other and they're going to come together because it is not working. But our, our speech matters. See, Ephesians 4, 9 says this, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. If you can't say anything nice, don't say nothing at all, okay? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything else. If it's not helpful, just skip it. Skip over it. I mean, we all have great critiques. We can all point out all the negatives. If it's not helpful and it's pulling down, just skip it. Just skip it. I think if we would just stop here and apply this one verse to life, our marriages, our friendships, our parenting, our workplace, all these areas, it would be greatly worth it, just one verse. I just stand up here and read one verse today, and if we apply that one, there would be huge change in our life. Don't let the abusive talk come out. Let everything that you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. I'm only going to say words that encourage. I'm only, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna filter the rest of that stuff out. 
And sometimes you got to speak some truth and it hurts, but you can do it in a way that's helpful. And not to make somebody hate existence like we're so good at doing. Second thing, second thing, if you think of something good, say it. These are profound and deep today, I know. You're going to leave us to the depth of knowledge. If you think of something good, or you see something good, say it. So easy. Proverbs 14, 24 says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. I mean, kind words go a long way. It doesn't say that gracious and nice thoughts are sweet like honey. Like, I'm really thinking something nice about them right now. And if they could read my mind, they would know, I think that's grand. The problem is they cannot read your mind. So you have words, use them. Your words have the power to give life and to bless people. So we're going to skip over the junk, the stuff that's not helpful, but when we see something that is going to be helpful, we say it. We say it. See, a lot of us, we've lived, though, in, in, in a world, and, and some of us have been raised in an atmosphere where positive words did not abound, where, where, where things that were spoken life into you were not the, the, the main words that were said. We can probably think a lot of the other ones that I wish they would have skipped over some of the other ones. A lot of us, we haven't had a life where this has been modeled. But can I tell you, change the way that, that is operated in your life starting today. Don't do the same to your kids, to your wife, to your husband, to your coworkers, because it was modeled for you and you're miserable. Begin to speak things. When you see something good, say it. Say it. Life-giving words are like seeds that help other people grow. We have the power to bless people. Sometimes the things that keep my head up, that uplift me, that encourage me, are words from people. Now, I don't, I don't live my life based on if somebody's going to say a nice word or not either. I'm not on this, on this uh, point of life that if somebody doesn't give me a nice word, I'm going to fall over and die. I, 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 I am not that self-dependent, but you know what? It sure feels good. It sure is nice. And the people around you need it. What I would say to you is this, don't keep life from other people. And then in the same respect, don't keep life from yourself. Don't keep life from yourself. If you think something good that you did, you know what? Say it. Be proud of yourself. What will someone else or what are you going to miss out on if you don't say life-giving words? What is that, impl- that person at work? What are your kids and your spouse and the people around you? What is the person at the grocery store? What are these people going to miss out on in life if you don't say it? They're never going to be encouraged by the word that you had. So I encourage you, text someone, text someone, make, make Make a moment where you can have a conversation. Say a good comment on Facebook, on a Facebook post. Let it be encouraging instead of thinking, oh, it's just on social media, so it's not as bad. It is. Say something encouraging. Write a letter. Whatever it's got to do, but say it. Let it be said. Let people hear what you've got to say. Make it a constant rule, a constant. This is a constant. This is the buoy in the water, no matter what hurricanes come, that I'm going to watch what comes out of my mouth. I'm going to be careful to not hold back a blessing from somebody or from myself. I'm going to speak life-giving words. When an opportunity comes up for an encouraging word, guess what? Say it. That's easy enough, right? Um, I ran this week. Two times. It's a lot for me. It's a lot, okay? I am a big boy. So saying I'm going running is like some of you putting on like a pack of bricks and going out and running, okay? So it's, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I went out and I I began to to run, which first off, uh, just the encouragement to myself to go uh, was a lot. 
Uh, so I got out there, and I, be- I began to, to run slash walk slash uh, heave like I'm going to throw up um, slash be in, in a lot of pain. So that's what I was doing. It, was, it, it looked very ugly, and the thing is I'm like passing people on this trail, and like as I'm getting by them, I'm trying to look really good. And as soon as I get around the corner, I'm like, oh, God, help me. That's really kind of what it looked like. And, and um, so I was in the middle of, of, of this run, and, um, and I began to like audibly say to myself, I was saying this out loud, I'm so unhealthy, I'm so unhealthy, oh my goodness, I'm so unhealthy, because I was hurting, like legitimately, like, like the side pain that we get, it's like somebody hit me with a bazooka, like I was missing half of my side, it hurt. Uh, and, and so I, I'm, running, I'm literally saying these words out loud. And so I had to stop the words that I was saying. I had to recognize the words that were coming out of my mouth, and I stopped, and and, and I replaced what was being said. I said, no, 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 no. If I can't say anything nice, I'm not going to say anything at all. But I'm going to see what is good, and I'm going to say it. So I just began to say out loud, not where everybody could hear, because that just gets a little weird, right? Like, that man talking to himself. Like, we've seen those people, right? And we say it, that man talking about himself. What we do is we wait until they don't see us and we're by ourselves and then we say out loud, they're talking to themselves and you talk to yourself, which is equally as weird, just so you know. But so I'm, I'm talking to myself and I, I replace those words and I, I'm talking, I'm like, maybe I don't have, I can't, I'm, I'm searching for encouraging words. I'm, I'm looking in the depth of everything. I'm like, oh, there's got to be something good to say right now because I can't feel it. Or, and then I just, begin to, I just begin to say, I got out of bed. I got out of bed. I'm out here. I'm out here this morning. I'm out here. I'm, I'm taking a step. I'm taking a step. So I just begin to say the things that I recognized were good. Like, I'm doing it. One step at a time, I'm doing this. And so I would say it. I didn't hold it back. I began to say it, and I made it the rest of that lap. And then, then I stopped for a good couple of minutes, caught my breath, and then I walked for a while. But I, I, I did it because I began to speak something that I needed to hear and encourage myself. See, sometimes you're so negative on yourself, and you may not have people all around you all the time every day encouraging you. You may not have a boss that comes in just like, hey, good looking, you're doing great, the numbers are up, and you're amazing. You may not hear that all the time. Hey, you know what, the numbers are down a little bit, but you know what, I believe in you, Tiger. You're probably not going to hear that. You probably hear more often than not, negative. I used to have a boss that came in and tore us down all the time that would say everything negative that you could imagine. That doesn't create a very encouraging work atmosphere. Because the words that you speak have power. And maybe somebody around you is not speaking some encouraging words right now, but we can take a note from David. David, he was hitting a, a low time in his life. He was... He was he was at a, a very discouraged point. And in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, um, he, he, didn't, he didn't say, so he joined a self-help club. He read a very good book. No, 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 what he did is he said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes i got to encourage myself. My wife is very encouraging. She believes in me more than I believe in me. She believes in me so much to throw snacks away. Like, I didn't believe that much in our diet. Like, <laughs> I want to have a contingency plan, right? Like, there's a Twinkie close by at all times. That salad didn't do it. I mean, I can slam three of those Twinkies back, and I'm full for a while. But she believed in me, so she threw everything away. Thank you so much. Um, but sometimes she's not around, so I've got to get what he's got, and I've got to encourage myself. Whenever things are looking bad, we've got to encourage ourselves. Whenever the waves are crashing over us and we feel like we're drowning and there's nobody else around us saying, you can do it, you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes I just got to encourage myself. No matter what all the other voices say, sometimes I just got to tell myself, you know what? God's in this. God's in me. I can do this. See, if you want it, if you want to see it, you got to say it. If you want to see it, you got to say it. Begin to speak positive things, begin to speak God things, God truths over your life and over other people's life that you're around. Begin to speak it out. Now, here's what I'm not saying. 
I'm not saying that whatever you speak out is going to happen. I'm not saying that I said, I'm going I'm to I'm drive a Corvette. I'm going to drive a Corvette. I'm going to drive a Corvette. No, what I want you to do is I want your words to line up with God's truths. Because there are some things that God says, I may not want you to have a Corvette. I may want you to be satisfied with a Buick. Which those are pretty sweet, by the way, some of the new ones. I wouldn't be upset about that. But I want our words to line up with God's truth. There's power in speaking God's truth. I want to give you one, one part of a phrase. One, just one, one part of a little, little part of a phrase that I think that if, if you'll remember this, that it'll change a lot about the things that you say. If you'll make this small phrase constant in your life, it's going to change the way that you see some things. It's going to change the way you see your world because it's going to change some of your words. Here's the phrase. And, and this phrase is meant to be tacked on to the end of anything that you say. And here it is. And that's the way I want it. And that's the way I want it. Here's what I mean. You begin to talk about your marriage and you begin to say, this is horrible. It's probably going to end in divorce. End it with, and that's the way that I want it. I'm so huge, I'll never feel good about myself, and that's the way I want it. See, that doesn't work, does it? It just doesn't work, because that's not the way that I want it. And that's the way I want it. Whenever you say something, if you can tag that on the end, and it still works then you can say it. What about, this is the way things are right now, but I'm surrendering my finances unto God, and he's going to help me get out of debt, and we're going to begin to glorify him with my finances, and we're going forward, and that's the way I want it. That works a little bit better, doesn't it? It's been tough right now. Uh, I can, it, you can't avoid some seasons of, and some situations of life but God is guiding me, and God is in this, and God is bringing me to somewhere new. God is bringing me to somewhere I can't even see because that's the way I want it. My workplace really does stink. It's not been a good situation, but God, you are going to use me as a light in the darkness because that's the way that I want it. If you can tag that on and it still makes sense, then you can use it. The problem is we speak some negative words sometimes that you tag that at the end, it just doesn't work. You're a failure as you speak to your kids, and that's the way I want it. No, it's not. No, it's not. Well, what do you say? Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe you didn't do so great at that thing, but with, you're going to work, and you're going to do great, and you're going you're to be amazing at the things that you do because you're going to put your mind to it, and you're going to put everything you have in it. I believe in you. You're amazing because that's the way that I want it. It'll change your words. It'll change the way that you view things. So as we end week one, we said, hey, I want you to ask God for one word. One word that's going to set the course for this new season of your life. One word, one thing that says, hey, uh, God, I, I, I trust you. Whatever that is, I don't know what your word was. And if you haven't done this yet, I want you to join in with us. We said, I believe that God still speaks to his people, so we're seeking God for some things. The first one was one, one word. This new season of my life, I don't know it, what yours wind up being. Maybe it's a gener generous. I'm going to be generous because I've been stingy. I'm going to be generous. Maybe it's faithful. Maybe it's trustworthy. Maybe it's um, diet. Maybe it's, what, what is your one word that's going to set the course for your new season? It's, 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 it's a word that said, God, I want you to give, give me direction in my life. God's will is not supposed to be clouded in some kind of mystery. It does require seeking after God, and sometimes you only get one step. <laughs> but it's about a trust and a faith journey. So what's that one word that God will speak to you? Week two, we said, I want you to, to ask God for one thought. One thought that you're going to consistently replay in your mind over and over like a tape recorder on repeat. That there's this one thought. I believe that I can. I, 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 I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I, 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 I am an overcomer. Whatever you need to think. What, what is that one thought that God can plant inside of your mind? And today I want you to ask God for one statement. One statement that you're going to audibly say, that you're going to say to people, that you're going to say to yourself, and it's going to set the course for this new season in your life. 
as you talk to people? Can it be one of the, can it be the thought that you had? Sure, I don't, I don't know. Maybe your, your one thought was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you need to audibly say that out loud. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And speak that over other people you know, as they're struggling, as they're having a hard time. You know what the scripture says? The scripture says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I believe in you. I want you to seek God for one statement. Something that you're going to declare over yourself and you're going to declare over other people. One statement that's going to be life-giving. That's going to be like that, that small little rudder on that huge ship. It's going to set the course for where we're going. Don't miss the power of one statement. Don't miss the power of, of, of one statement in your life. You can be one statement away from going the direction that God wants to go, you to go in your life. Changing the vocabulary that you use because there's life and there's death in the power of your words. There's power. Speak life-giving. Your words matter. So here's my question to you, and you know from the scale, have your words been stabbing or uplifting? Stabbing or uplifting? Have your words been crushing or encouraging? What, what, have, your, what have your words been like? See, whenever um, God... God told Ezekiel, he said, hey, I want you to go speak to these dry bones that are going to come alive. I want you to go speak to these dry bones. He didn't say, I want you to go talk about these dry bones. I don't want you to speak about these. I don't want you to get on Facebook and make a social media post about these dry bones. I want you to speak to these dry bones, and they're going to come to life. He said, if you speak to a mountain, and you tell it to move, it'll move. He didn't say, I want you to talk about the mountain, talk about how big the mountain is, talk about how shiny it is, how, how great it is, how, how, how too big it is. I don't want you to talk about how the terrain is difficult. I don't want you to have a conversation about the mountain. I want you to speak to the mountain, and it'll move. There's power of life and death in your words. Begin to speak to some things in your life. And make sure the words are life-giving. Speak to it. God's going to use you for some incredible things. But see, our thoughts become our words. Words become our actions. Actions become habits. And habits set the course for our de destiny. Our words matter. If you would stand up with me. I really believe this. I believe if we just apply maybe a small fraction of what, of what we've heard today, that in this new season of our life, people are going to look at us and they're going to say, hey, something is different about you. I, I actually like being around you now. What happened? You're like, I feel so good when I'm around you. What, what happened? And what, what big thing did you do that, that made this happen? And you'll say, yeah, really, you know what, really, really wasn't anything big at all. I just, I just realized that my, my words have weight. And this weight can either uplift somebody or it can crush them under its weight. And I, I, just, I just chose to uplift you. I just chose to let my words be different. I chose to remember what my mama said. I can't say nothing nice, don't say it at all. And if I saw something good, I said it. And I think you'll look back and say, man, something really has changed. Because a small, constant difference and the words that I speak will make a huge difference in the life that I live. It's often the small constants that no one sees that results in the big effects that everyone wants. Your words have weight. And here's the deal. Start today. Start today. They'll say, you know, Monday I'm going to be really nice to somebody. I want to say, start today. Maybe, you, maybe you, you said some hurtful things and you know it. You've got to shoot a text. You've got to make a phone call today. Start today. Let your words be uplifting. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you that the most encouraging words that we can ever hear are the words that you said about us. 
it, it, it can be so easy to encourage ourselves in the Lord whenever we know the scripture and we know what it says. You, you, you said in there that I, I, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. You know every hair on my head. You take care of the sparrows, and if you care about them, how much more do you care about me? I know what your scripture says, God. There's some people in here this morning that need to be encouraged. God, so I say, speak life into them today. Maybe they've been in a season that have beat them down. There's been some weight put on them. Maybe some words that have been said. God, I just pray that your, your, your words of encouragement will lift the weight off. God, then also I pray that you, you'll put new words inside of us. As we, as we begin to speak to uplift people and we keep our mouths shut when it's going to tear people down. Or we find a life-giving way to say it. I thank you, Lord. As your heads are bad, I want to ask just a, a couple of questions. Maybe you're in here and, and, and you've never given your life to Christ before. You've never made that dedication to, to live for Him. I, I'm telling you, he has, he has an incredible life for you. He loves you. Jesus came on this earth and he died to set you free from whatever has happened in your life, whatever you've done wrong. He said, I set you free, I forgive you, and I'm making you right in a relationship with the God of all the universe from now and for eternity. And he said, hey, I need that fresh start today. I want to live that. That's you, I want to see your hand. Slip your hand up. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray right now in this solemn moment that God, you begin to work in hearts. And as we say just a simple statement, God, forgive me. Set me back on the right course. I give my life to you. Make me new. Give me a fresh start. God, you do instantly. Thank you for life change. Last question. Maybe you can admit in this place, you say, my, my words have been used to destroy, and I need God's help to begin to use a different vocabulary. If you'd slip your hand up, I want to pray for you. Father, you see willing hearts all across this place. God, I, pray, I just pray that you meet, meet our level of faith and our, and our level of obedience, God, with your spirit. And as we trust you to replace our vocabulary, that you'll come in and replace that speech. We give a constant, constant look at the words that we use because it sets the course for where it is that we're going. God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's sermon at City Church. We are passionate about seeing people lead full lives in Christ. And we truly hope that you've been impacted today by God's Word. If there's anything that we can do for you, or you would like to share with us what God has spoken to you today through this message, please email us at info at citychurchlufkin.com. Or for more information about who we are, visit us online at citychurchlufkin.com.